I have been looking forward to watching Donald Glover's new show Atlanta on FX for the past few months. The first time I heard that it was coming out, I was on board. I was looking at all the screenshots, reading up on it as much as I could, all the trailers, the Tame Impala in it. I was sold from the beginning. As you guys know, I'm a big Donald Glover fan. I love the Childish Gambino project. I love clapping for all the wrong reasons. I did a Dom Diggs on a couple of his things. I included him in Hip Hop RPG. I'm a big Donald Glover fan. Um, I had a lot of expectations for Atlanta going in. Last night, uh, episodes one and two aired, and I would say that I'm, I'm mostly pleased with what I saw. Before I talk about the show, I wanna talk about black cinema as an institution in general. I have an issue with a lot of black TV and black cinema. If I could boil my issues with black cinema down to one thing, I'd say that primarily it lacks subtlety. And when I say subtlety, I, I'm talking mostly about the writing. With the presentation, the aesthetics, I'm really not gonna get into that, but with the writing, the way the characters are depicted, the way stories are depicted with black people in cinema, I find a lot of, a lot of tropes that are repetitive, like, here's an example, I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. Protagonists are usually these shining beacons of hope and goodness until they do one bad thing and then all of a sudden they catch AIDS or their partner dies or they get their kids taken away from them. It's always this one thing. There's no subtlety in terms of good and evil. It's like, you're a super crazy bitch who cheats on everyone or you're someone who like, oh man, I just, I just wanna find the right guy and I do everything right. Or you're just like a, you're, you're a crazy ass dude and you want to kill everybody. Or you're just a guy who's like, oh, I'm a live and let live kind of dude. And it's like, it's like you, you, you fit into these molds that are just, like I said, there's, there's not subtle, there's not enough gray there. Um, that's, that's one of my many issues. And I, like I said, I think that might be pressure from studios to be like, this is the kind of story we need to get most black audiences to be into something that's in theaters. And I'm, I'm talking about the Tyler Perry's and the, the chick who made Scandal or whatever that, that shit is. Now you compare that to something else like Louie that comes on FX, that's all gray area. It's like the person's trying to do good things and most of the time, uh, kind of shitty stuff happens to them. Look at Curb Your Enthusiasm, something like that. Main character's kind of a piece of shit. And you do see some black movies trying to tackle this, but I don't think there's enough of that. I don't think we've allowed enough subtlety in writing, um, nuance, and types of people that we, that we experience in these stories. Atlanta is doing this, and that's why I think it's really fulfilling this need that black cinema and black TV shows have needed for a really, really long time. So the main character is Ernest, played by Donald Glover, and all we know about him was that he was at school in Princeton for a while. Now he's not there anymore. Now he's living with his baby mama and his kid, and apparently no one really believes in him. He's kind of in a shitty spot, and he has a cousin who's paper boy, and he's this kind of, he's a really big local rapper in the Atlanta scene. He's like climbing up, and this other weird dude <laughs> who's, I forget his name, he's very funny. In Atlanta, we get different, and we get subtle, by these characters kind of walking a line, just like people do. Ernest is a very smart guy, but he's not in college anymore. He was kind of uh, dethroned from this, this big uh, institution he was in. Paperboy is this big rapper, and although he's getting all these accolades for being this guy who's running around with guns, shooting people, this isn't what he wants, and in his mind he knows that he shouldn't be doing this thing, but I guess he, he, he likes the treatment that he gets for it, but he's definitely conflicted for, for what he's experiencing. I thought the interactions between Ernest and all the other characters were very well done, and they, it wasn't heavy handed. And that's another thing I really love about this show is that it talks about, obviously it's gonna talk about the black experience. It has a majority black cast, but nothing is heavy handed. You're not seeing a lot of, look at this, look at the experience of the black man in America. Blah, blah, blah. It's none of that. It's very much like, like it is just to exist as a black person. It's like things happen to you, you're just a person. It's just, it's just showing someone's experience. So Ernest and Paperboy get, get thrown into jail, and then the show is in jail. It's not like sad music is playing, and it's like, look at this, look how sad this is, don't you wanna change, it's none of that. It's again, subtle. It's just showing you people's experiences, trying to be true to what these characters are experiencing, and 
yeah, weird shit happens in prison, in real life, so weird, awful shit happens in jail as well. And they merge it with funny stuff happening as well. It's like one moment this guy's walking around with his gown flapping and he's, he's in and out of prison and people are laughing at him because he was drinking some toilet water and next minute he's getting the shit beat out of him by a cop. This one guy is in love with this trans woman and people are calling him gay and it's pretty funny for a while. And then it just gets very tense. But again, it's not over the top. I found it very subtle. It's like you're moving in and out of these situations. So yeah, Ernest is trying to become Paperboy's manager. He's trying to make something happen for himself because at this point he has like kind of no money to his name and he feels like this might be his last shot to try and do something big. The storyline, very solid. Characters, very solid. Acting is excellent. Now the direction. The direction of this thing, beautiful shots, excellent cinematography. This is all because of Hiro Murai. You know Hiro Murai from his various excellent hip hop videos that he's directed. He did Clapping for the Wrong Reasons, if I'm not wrong, I think he directed that. But this guy has an excellent vision, excellent eye for dark, kind of sweeping shots, framing things very beautifully. And it's so, again, subtle. The way things are framed in this show, if you're paying attention, even if you're not paying attention, it's very pleasing. And if you're trying to be very critical and notice these things, it's excellent. I was impressed that they were allowed to say fuck and shit on FX. I thought shit was only allowed, but this is a sign of FX changing. Um, TV is changing in general. I mean, even USA has Mr. Robot. You see all these TV networks gearing up and sort of getting their champions together. Each network has like, Titan TV shows that are kind of pushing things forward into what I imagine will be new streaming services where they're all gonna try and compete on the level of Netflix and HBO. Yeah, all these TV networks are finally realizing, oh man, we should just start allowing all this stuff. Let's start allowing more of this adult content because people wanna see it, clearly. And we have to let the creatives create what they do because people will come to it. So that was really awesome of FX to let them do that. Donald Glover's executive producer on this, so I mean, his hands are deep into this and driving it the way he needs it to go. So, I mean, this is what he talked about when he left Community and wanted to do something bigger. This is it. Uh, if I could make some predictions about the future, I think, I think we're gonna find out exactly why Earn got kicked out at Princeton. It's probably gonna be pretty sad. Uh, Paperboy is gonna have to contend with his image, and I think he's gonna. He's gonna allow Ern to be his manager and sort of let him craft his image, which is another thing I wanted to say. Just the premise of a manager trying to manage an artist and change his image in the internet world is a pretty unique premise for a show. So, awesome. I love this shit. I don't think the Nutella sandwich making bus rider guy is real. I think he's somewhere in between real and fiction where maybe it's one of those things where only few people can see him but it's a supernatural element. I like supernatural elements and I was hoping for more of that in episode one and two, by the way. So maybe the rest of the show is gonna have a little more supernatural shit happening. You know what else was supernatural? The wings. Them opening up the wings and it was like glowing from the inside, that was pretty cool. If you guys watched the show, let me know what you thought about it. Also, let me know um, if you agreed with me in terms of black cinema in general and black TV, what you feel like this show might be doing that a lot of black movies and TV shows aren't doing, or if you feel like it's doing the same thing, leave a comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching. What I look like, a valet? Keep it, it's yours. Hmm?